Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this audio, we are looking at carrier sense multiple access with collision detection. CSMA CD. In the previous video, we looked at just the base protocol, which is CSMA, carrier sense multiple access. Okay? So you could say that CSMA is the mother protocol and it has two children, CSMA, CD, and CSMA, CA. Okay? Carrier sense multiple access with collision detection. and carrier sense multiple access with collision avoidance. This is used for wired networks and this is used for wireless networks. Okay? So CSMA is the base protocol and it has one variation which is CSMA CD and another variation which is CSMA CA. These two variations decide about how to behave in the face of collisions. Okay? So because we have the wired medium and the wireless medium, they have different behavior, they have different characteristics, we have different changes to CSMA, the base protocol. Okay? So now let's look at what CSMA CD says. It says, in this method, a station monitors the medium after it sends a frame to see if the transmission was successful. Okay? Now, we have to understand one concept about CSMA CD. Unlike the Aloha protocol, CSMA CD does not have a procedure for acknowledgement okay it does not have a procedure for acknowledgement in Aloha we send the frame and then we waited for an acknowledgement and this acknowledgement tells us the frame was sent successfully but in CSMA CD we do not have acknowledgement mechanism so what does that mean? Okay, what does that mean? It means that if this is, okay, if this is station A, which is sending the frame, okay, it has a frame it is it wants to send, okay, to station B, okay, And let's say the time required to send this frame is TFR, okay? The frame transmission time, okay? Now, in CSMA CD, the problem is that if the frame leaves the sender, okay, if it leaves the sender completely and if there is a collision, the frame is lost, okay, the frame is lost and this station does not have a copy, the sender will not, does not have a copy of this frame okay so
So we have to make a certain arrangement. Now before that, let us look at what happens between when the frame is transmitted. Okay, look at this figure here. We have station A, okay, we have station A here that is sending the frame at time T1. It's sending the frame at time T1, okay? But will this frame reach station B at time T1? No, it won't because there is a propagation delay in the network, okay? The, the, it will take some time for this signal to reach B. So this is why we do not have this line going straight. It doesn't go straight, okay? The signal does not go straight like this, no, okay? It goes like this. So the signal is going to reach B at this time, okay? A time which is a bit more than T1, okay? So in this time, until the signal, the first bit from A reaches station B, B will not know that A has started sending. Okay, B will not know. If let's say this time is T5, okay, before time T5, what is T5? T5 is the time when the first bit from, from A has reached B. Once B hears this, we know that B will not send. Okay, and how does B come to know? that there is something on the network, okay? We say that in CSMA CD, a station is doing two things. It is sending, okay? It can send, but it can also listen. It will also listen to the medium, okay? It will do two things. It will it will send, but it will also listen to the medium. And what will it listen for? Okay, suppose this is the signal intensity. If no one is sending anything, we will have an idle medium. Okay, idle. So when B hears, listens to the medium, it will not hear anything. Okay. When someone is sending on the channel, the stations will hear a normal signal, okay? A normal signal. So this is the intensity of a normal signal. So they will hear a certain level, okay? But if there is a collision, it means there is more than one signal on the channel. When there is more than one signal, there is more energy, okay? So this is the energy for one signal, one station's signal. But if there is more than one signal, then you will see something abnormal, okay? You will see abnormal signal. So when a station Here's an abnormal signal on the medium, okay, when it listens to the medium. And so, for instance, in this case, A is sending and is also listening to the medium at the same time, okay. If A is hearing an idle, when A sends its signal, when A sends the packets, it will hear a normal signal, its own signal, okay? It will hear its own signal. So which is fine, okay? 
but if there is a collision, it will hear its own signal plus someone else's signal. So it will hear an abnormal energy level on the channel. At this point, it will say there is a collision. Okay, it will say there is a collision and it will stop sending. Okay, it will stop sending. So at this point in time, T5, B starts, when B listens to the medium, it will see something like this, okay? So B will now know at this point that, oh, someone is sending, so the medium is busy, okay? It's a busy medium. But look at this, okay? Look at this problem. We have... A has already started sending at T1, but the signal does not reach B until T5. So in this period, okay, in this time, in this time, B can, B will find the medium like this, idle, empty. So B can send the signal and cause a collision with A signal. Okay, this is the problem we face. So at this point in time, B will come to know that A is sending. So B will not send now anything. Then, but we still have other stations that still don't know. Okay, so this is the T1, T1, right? But C actually comes to know at point T, this point. Okay, C will come to know at this point that A is sending, okay? And D will come to know at this point here. When A's first bit reaches D, it will come to know that A is sending, okay? At this point in time. Now D, what is D? D is the last station on the network. It is the farthest station on the network, okay? On the, on the shared channel on the shared channel okay d is the farthest station so at this point in time d is the last one to know about a's transmission once d comes to know that's it there is no danger of a collision because now everyone before that come now knows that there is a is sending something okay but look at this point okay so we say at this point here t6 c comes to know about a's signal okay it'll take this time for a's signal to reach c but so before that c does not know all this time okay all this time C does not know that A is sending. So what does C do? C, unfortunately, here sends its own. It looks at the medium, finds it idle. So it sends its own packet. But this packet now clashes with A at this point and causes a collision. Okay, it causes a collision. Now, so what's happening in here? At this point, you have the signal going abnormal. Okay, the signal is now abnormal because A's energy is combining with C's energy and the signal is going abnormal. Okay, now this signal, this abnormal signal will also take some time to reach A. Okay, it will reach some time to reach A. But when it reaches A at T4, A will, well, because A is sending and listening, right? We said A is sending and listening. So A will now listen and it will find something like this. 
because now this abnormal signal had reached here. So now what will A do? A will detect the collision and stop the transmission. Stop the transmission. Okay? Of the frame. Similarly, for C, at this point in time we said there was a collision. So the energy now is abnormal. So when A's signal reaches C, it is not like this. It is like this because there is A's and C signal combined. Okay, so C now also comes to know that there is a collision and it will stop the transmission immediately. Okay, so this is what happens during carrier sense multiple axis with collision detection. Okay, it will take some time for the medium to come to know, for all the stations on the medium to come to know. Okay. Now let's look at the next scenario. Okay. We said we have A that is sending. This is the timeline for A. Okay. We have B, C, D, and E. Okay. And E is the furthest station. Okay. On the shared medium. E is the furthest station on the shared medium. If A starts sending at time T0, okay, the signal will travel like this and it will eventually reach E at this point, okay? So at this point in time, B will come to know that A is sending. At this point in time, C will come to know that A is sending. At this point in time, D will come to know that A is sending. So once A, B, C and D and there are maybe other stations, they will all come to know that A is sending. So they will not send. But look at this case. E. When will E come to know? E will come to know at T1 at this point, okay? Before this point, okay, all this time, if we look at this time, T0, okay, this is T0, all this time, although A is sending, okay, E does not know, okay? E does not know about is transmission. So all this time there is a chance that if E sends, E can transmit and cause a collision. Okay, there is a good chance. Now what is the time of the signal of A to reach E. This is the maximum propagation delay, TP. Okay, it is TP, which is the time for A's signal to reach the last station. Okay, the last station, TP. So this time we are saying is TP, okay? Now look at this case. For A's signal to reach E, we said it is TP. But let's say at this point, okay, as A's signal sends, in the worst case scenario, we're talking about the worst case scenario, just before A's signal reaches E, E sends a packet. 
Okay. E sends a packet. And what will this cause? What will this cause? This will cause a collision. Okay. This will cause a collision at in here. Now, how long will it take for this, the high double signal, the abnormal signal, okay? So, when there is a collision here, we are now getting an abnormal signal. So, how long will it take for this abnormal signal to reach A? Another time, TP, okay? Another time, TP. So, we say in the worst case, worst case scenario okay and the worst case the time needed for a to know about a collision okay to know about collision is 2tp okay so the time it sent the signal and the and the another TP for it to know about it. So this is the worst case scenario, okay, where A will come to know. After this time, there is no danger because after TP, E will come to know. So E will not send anything, okay. So this is the worst case scenario. Once we clear this time we can be sure that our packet was transmitted successfully, okay? We can be sure that the packet was transmitted successfully if we do not hear a collision for 2TP. Now let's go back to what I was explaining earlier, okay? Let's go back to that case. Now we said that when A is sending the frame, A wants to send this frame, okay, to B. A wants to send it to B. We say that if A sends the frame and if the frame suffers a collision somewhere here after it leaves A, it will be lost because there is no acknowledgement mechanism in CSMA CD. So how can we make sure that this frame will be transmitted successfully? In this case, we say that if this, if A is transmitting, okay, so it has transmitted all this frame and it is waiting to send this. If after sending this frame it comes to know about a collision, it will stop immediately and it will send the whole frame again. Even if there is one bit remaining, okay, and A detects a collision for this one, it will stop and it will send the frame again. So as long as the frame is there with A, it can send it. But once the frame leaves A, and if there is a collision, then the frame will be lost. Now what did we say in the previous explanation? We said the maximum time we need to know a collision is to TP, right? The maximum time it can take to it can take A to know about a collision is 2TP. So if we now make the frame transmission time TFR, okay, if we now make the frame transmission time TFR equal to 2TP, then we will not have to worry because we know for sure that after 2TP, there is no danger for collision. Okay, there is no danger. So that's why we have to make our frame transmission time 2TP. Okay, 
So the frame slot that we have in which we transmit the frame, this frame slot has to be TFR is equal to 2TP. Okay, so this is how CSMACD works. Now let's look at the next flow diagram. Okay. So we have TFR is the frame, average frame transmission time. K is the number of attempts. R is the random number. And TB is the back of time. When the station has a frame to send, K is equal to zero, okay? It will apply one of the persistence methods that we saw, okay? One persistent, um, P persistent or non-persistent. So it could apply one of the three mechanisms here. At this point in time, remember, okay? When the station is ready to send, the medium we know is free, okay? The medium is free at this point in time. So once the persistence method and everything is successful, it will start sending the frame, right? It will start sending the frame. But what did we say it's, it's doing? It is sending and listening, okay? So receiving here means it is listening to the medium. Okay, so now it is doing two things here. It is sending and listening at the same time. But it is also checking for a collision. Okay, so it will send and it will listen and say, okay, now, is the packet finished? Has the transmission finished? Or is there a collision on the network? No, the packet has not finished transmitting and there is no collision everything is fine so we will say okay transmit and keep listening keep transmitting and keep listening until when until one of these conditions is there either the frame is done or there is a collision okay so if one of these is true then it will check in here Okay, so you have stopped. Is it because there is a collision? If there is no collision, I say no. We just stop because we have finished sending. So, which means it is a success. But if it stopped and we say yes, we there is a collision, then what does the frame do? The what does the sender do first? It will send a jamming signal. A jamming signal to all to on the on the shared medium okay this signal is like an alert it's like an alarm and it will send this jamming signal to all the stations to say to them don't send anything a collision has taken place okay and then we do k is equal to k plus 1 and then we check here is k greater than k max okay if no, then we create the random number, we wait for TB seconds, and then we go off and we repeat the, the, the whole scenario again. Okay, so this is the functioning of CSMA CD. So we have seen the diagram in here once again. So if there is a normal frame transmission, the energy is normal. If we have a collision, the energy is almost double because there is the energy for two signals instead of one, which is abnormal, we said. And if there is nothing transmitted, the medium is idle. So this was carrier sense multiple axis with collision 
detection.